Hey everyone, welcome back to the Immersive Limit YouTube channel. My name is Adam Kelly, and in this video I'm going to return to Unity ML Agents for the first time in a few months. Unity ML Agents is actually kind of what put this YouTube channel on the map, but then I've sort of deviated and done some more AI related stuff. I'm going to return to Unity ML Agents now, and since it's been a little while, I figured it would be a good idea to just go through the basic setup again, since quite a lot has changed. So we're looking at the ML Agents GitHub page right now, and this is going to be required for what we're going to do in these few videos here. I think they'll probably be broken up into two videos, one for installing and setting up ML Agents and the other for trying out some of the samples and doing some training. So I'll try and segment them in a way that makes sense. So if you haven't already navigated to this page, you can get there. It's at github.com slash unity technologies slash ML agents, like you see up here, or you can just Google ML agents and it should be the top result. So there's a lot of really helpful documentation here, and that's where I learned a lot of this stuff from. Uh, and so if at any point you're kind of lost and maybe I'm not explaining anything perfectly, Go ahead and check out the ML Agents repo, all the documentation that's here. They also have a forum, and I don't know where the link to that is in here. It's probably here somewhere, community and feedback, ML Agents forum right here. So this is a great place to get your questions answered. The Unity team is pretty active on here, and they should be able to help out with questions that you have that I'm unable to answer. So to get started, I recommend that you check the releases here. So the latest one as of a couple days ago for me, as I'm recording this, is release 10. And so I have no idea what has changed. The last time I used it was release 2, which was earlier this year. Hopefully not too much has changed, but we'll see. So you can download this by clicking this download button, but I'll show you what this does. This actually, if you look down in the bottom left corner, the little preview, might be kind of hard to see, but it, it's basically just pointing to a release tab. So if we go up here on the right and we look at releases, we can look at ML Agents Release 10. And the thing that it's going that it's pointing to is just this source code.zip. As you can see, I'm working on Windows, so I'm going to use the zip file. I imagine if you're on Linux, uh, you would want to use the tar.gz, but that's up to you. So go ahead and download this release 10 zip file. Uh, if it's on a future release, then that's not a big problem, but things might differ from how they are in this video. So I'm just gonna save this file. And uh, I'll point out a couple things up here. So the package versions, they show the recommended matching versions to go with all this. So we'll be referencing this as we set up Unity and make sure that everything matches. And then we will make sure that our Python versions and stuff are all kind of in line so that we don't have any uh, version conflicts. So I'm going to find this folder and I'm going to just try to set this up in a place. I'm going to unzip it to somewhere that's convenient and then I'll meet back with you once I have that set up. So you go ahead and download this, place it somewhere on your computer that you're not going to accidentally delete it. Like I tend not to leave things in my downloads folder because occasionally I'll just go in there and just delete it all. So we'll meet back when we have our folder ready to go. Okay, so I have the ML Agents Release 10 folder open right now. And this is basically the exact folder that shows up on the ML Agents page. So if you go to the home page, we're looking at the master branch, which will likely be different because they're constantly updating the master branch. But once they save these releases, it's kind of like a snapshot of all the files at a certain known good point. So that's what we're looking at here. And you can see that there's actually a one-to-one -one mapping right now of all the different folders that are here. So like the project folder and the dev project and config, I'm not sure why they're in slightly different order here, but or maybe maybe they're not, maybe I'm just looking at it wrong. So what we want to do is start with the documentation. So you could look at the documentation that's 
uh, on the master branch, but if anything had changed since you looked at it and you're looking at the master branch, that means that it might be out of date, it might be bad information for the version that you're looking at. So you have two options. You can either go to, let's see, tags, I guess, and you can you can go to the release 10 tags and then you can view it here on GitHub or you can open the documentation directly from that folder that you downloaded. So I'm gonna do that just to make sure that it's a perfect match. And so I'll open up docs and typically you would start with the readme.md. So I'm going to open this with code. I have Visual Studio Code opened and this is in markdown format. If you want to preview it in a slightly prettier view, you can right click and open preview. And if you've never used Visual Studio Code, it's super awesome and I recommend it. It's free, it's really lightweight, easy to get. Just search Visual Studio Code and you'll be able to download it. So let me see if I can make this a little bigger. Nope, control, control and scrolling is not making this any bigger. Uh, let me see if I can zoom any other way. Zoom, zoom, zoom in, control plus equals. There we go. Okay, so we have our installation and setup first. Well, that's what we wanna do. And the reason I'm follow doing this is because I wanna sort of enable you, empower you to find your way on your own in case things change in the future so that you don't get stuck if you know there's no good YouTube video in the future that teaches you all of this. This is the exact way that I would go about doing it without a YouTube video. So we're gonna find this installation page here and we'll go here first. So it talks about the different components of ML agents. So we have a Unity package and it contains the C-sharp SDK that will be integrated into your Unity scene. So what this means is there's some C-sharp code that they've already written that makes ML agents work inside of Unity. Because otherwise, if you just open a Unity project and you don't have any of this code, then you could write a bunch of ML agents code, but none of it would work because it wouldn't have the C-sharp SDK. That means software development kit that's installed. So we'll need that. And then there's three Python packages. So the Python packages are what's used to train the deep learning part of this, the machine learning part. They don't have a way to train the Python directly inside of Unity. What you have to do is have a Python script that's running on the side that communicates directly with Unity and then the interface in between there allows the training to happen while it's simulating and using Unity as the simulator. So it's getting sort of visuals or physics information or whatever else you're trying to train your agents with. It is going to get those, send it to Python. Python's gonna train it. And then once you have a fully trained neural network, you sort of export that from Python and then you can drop it into your Unity package and then Unity can use it without Python in the future. So when you make your game, when you build your application in Unity and you wanna deploy it to a mobile phone or something, you don't need to worry about Python anymore at that point, it's just for the training stage. And then it talks about these example environments that highlight the various features of the toolkit. So that we'll probably get to uh, not in the first video, so that's, if we just look at it really quick, here are some example environments. If you've seen any videos or screenshots or you've tried ML agents before, you've probably seen these before. Maybe you're a little tired of them, but they are a good way to make sure that you have your environment working and that you understand the basics of how things go together. So we're not gonna skip over that. We're just not gonna do it right this moment. Uh, let me go back, okay. So let me go to installation here again. And we wanna make sure that we also have all of these things set up. So install Unity. Hopefully you've done that, but uh, if you haven't, go to Unity Hub, go to your installs and make sure you have an installed version that is high enough um, so that it's beyond this version. I'm planning on using this version right now, this 2019.4.15. LTS, that stands for long-term support. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because when I went to add, to add a new one, that was the recommended release. And just to avoid any bugs that might be in the new 2020 version, uh, I figured I would just use the recommended release. It should be pretty much the same. I don't think there's a lot of new features that you need to worry about. So whatever the recommended release is, that's what I'd recommend that you use for this. And we don't actually need to create a project yet, I don't think, but we'll see in a minute. So then we need install Python. So installing Python, you've got a couple options. One is you can go to Python's main website and you can just download Python and install it on your computer. If you're using Windows, that's really the way, that's the most uh, mainstream way to do it, I guess. Uh, if you're doing it on Linux or on Mac, um, I, unfortunately I don't have really any Mac experience with Unity development, so I can't really advise there, but I know on Linux to install Python, it's it's usually installed, pre-installed on the system. And then you need to clone this repository. So that's what we already did, actually. That was when we downloaded the repository. They say clone, if you're not super familiar with Git and how that works, that's just a fancier way to download a version controlled version of this project. We just downloaded a snapshot of it in a zip file, so we don't need to worry about that. So the one thing you may not have is Python, and I will put a link in the description to uh, more detailed installation instructions for getting Python working. My recommendation is to use Anaconda. That's what I always use for this, and it works best for me because I like to keep my um, my uh, Python environments separated. If you already know how to do Python virtual environments, then you can use that method. It's, it's essentially the same thing. Uh, but Anaconda, I think it's just a little bit more beginner friendly. And you can just type in Anaconda, whoops, if you spell it right, Anaconda in a search box. And this one right here is what you would want. And basically this just helps you do Python development on Windows, Linux, Mac, it doesn't matter. It helps with all of them. I'm trying to think, where was products? Individual edition. And then you can click on download and then you just pick your version and you install it. And once you've installed it, what you'll have is something called Anaconda Prompt. And Anaconda Prompt basically is just a Python interface and we'll, we'll come back to this, but um, from the base Anaconda environment, you can just run Python and you'll see that this default one right here is Python 3.7.4 and I can print hello from here and it returns hello. So I have Python working here. So that's just um, a required step. And like I said, I'll, I'll put some instructions, a uh, link to the instructions that I have, I think on a tutorial on my website for how to, how to install this. Cause it's not, it's not hard, but it's not maybe immediately obvious what you're supposed to do uh, after I've just breezed through it really quick. Okay. Once you have Unity and Python installed and you're pretty confident that it's set up correctly, we're going to open up the examples project. So that example project is inside of this repository that we downloaded, the ML Agents Release 10, inside of project. So what you need to do is go to Unity Hub and then click add. So what that's gonna do is add a new project to Unity Hub so that it can open it. So I'm gonna find that here. Let's see, where was I? I have a code folder, ML agents, release 10, and I'm gonna open this up. And it was created with a version from 2018, so that's fine. I just need to select a new version, and I'm gonna pick the one, this one, like 2019.4.15. You can choose, try whichever one you like. Just know that if you pick like a beta version or an alpha version or something, you may end up coming across uh, bugs or things like that. So a well-supported version is, is definitely recommended, especially if you're new to ML agents and you're not confident which errors are caused by which thing. So we have this here, we can open it up 
And it asks if I want to upgrade my project to a newer version of Unity. I'm going to say yes, confirm, and hopefully this doesn't take too long. Do you want to upgrade the project to use Asset Database version 2? Yes. Okay, so we have our project open now, and it looks basically just like an empty project, except now it has an ML agents folder in the assets folder. So we're going to double click on this, and we'll go into examples, and we'll pick one, let's see what's probably a good one. Maybe we'll try wall jump. And we'll open our, let's look in here, just make sure that we have a couple of neural networks. This is good. Okay. The reason I wanted to check this is the TF models are trained neural networks. And I'm pretty sure they switched away from TensorFlow and to PyTorch. Uh, I'm not sure if they fully made that transition. If they are using PyTorch, then I don't know if this is maybe a little misleading at this point, but TF stands for TensorFlow. Uh, so that means that they trained this agent and that we can try it out. So we're going to go into wall jump scenes and double click to open up the wall jump scene. And hopefully I can just hit play and it will start doing something. Okay, so we have an agent here, this little blue cube with the smiley face on it, or just face on it. Uh, and the task is to jump over this blue wall and it seems to be succeeding. So this is a fully trained agent that has learned to jump over this wall. And you can see that it's pretty smart. Sometimes it needs to use that cube as a step and other times it just jumps over a low wall if it doesn't need to. Or if there's no wall, it just goes directly and doesn't jump at all. So this has been trained with AI, but you didn't train it. Uh, this is automatically fully trained and they've provided it for us. And let's just take a quick look at this scene and we'll go through some more of these examples uh, in a separate video, but I just wanted to show you kind of what's going on. So we're looking at the game tab right now. This is a camera that's set up watching one of these. But if we switch to the scene tab, we'll see that there's actually a lot of these. They're very separate in the world so that they don't accidentally interfere with each other. But you can see that it's it's got a whole big grid of these that are set up. The reason why there are so many simultaneously is because during training, it's more efficient to train multiple at the same time than to just do one. You would probably get the same results in theory, but if you're training with, it looks like 24 of them simultaneously, it should in theory train at least 24 times faster. So that's why you see so many of these. And we're gonna take a look at one of these up close. So I'm gonna click on one and hit F to focus on it. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and we can look inside of this area to see what it is. And I'll go into more detail on this, but I just wanna kinda of explain a little bit of what's going on. So it's contained in, an, in a game object called wall jump area. This is not there's nothing special about it. It's literally just a container that's placing it in space. Then the children of this wall jump area are a wall, which in this case seems to be scaled down on the y-axis to zero, so it's it's completely razor thin, but I'm guessing that there's something that makes it taller in the script. So you can see that I'm I'm messing with it, making it taller or shorter. So they probably have a script that's doing that change randomly. And then we have an agent. We'll come back to that in just a second. The wall, I'll point out, has a box collider on it so that the agent can't move through it. Uh, there's a goal. The goal is also a box collider, but it looks like this is a trigger so that it's able to, uh, when it's triggered, when it gets hit, 
we're able to detect that something's inside of it. So that's what that is. And then we have a short block, which is this white block right here, it appears. And this has a rigid bit body on it, so it has physics and um, box collider mesh. So nothing, no scripting or anything on this. A spawn volume. So this is where it's going to spawn this agent. So where it's going to show up when it first starts out the scene, because you don't, it's kind of hard to uh, tell something to spawn in a specific area if you don't give it a boundary and use a script that says, hey, find something within this boundary and then and spawn it. So that's what that is. And then the ground is just a flat platform that this can't go through. And underneath is the border. That's just a box collider. So we haven't talked about agent yet. This is where all the interesting stuff happens that has anything to do with ML agents. And we'll just take a quick look at this person, this little cube person. So there are these lines pointing out that you'll see. And this, I believe, is just a visual that it's using to see. So it's using these lines sort of as ray casts. If you're familiar with Unity terminology, it's, it's casting a ray and telling if it's hitting something. Otherwise, you can think of it sort of like LiDAR, where it shoots out point of laser and it determines if how far away an obstacle is or if it hits anything um, you know just like a robot might use in the real world you use lidar to make sure it doesn't hit it run into things it's i like to think of it as a very simplified camera because it's it's kind of like you know if each one of these were representing a pixel in a really low resolution camera then it could tell the distance as like a as a value. Hopefully that's not more confusing than just think of it in, uh, thinking of it as lidar. So we look at our agent here and we've got some got a rigid body, we've got a box collider. These are things that just make the physics work properly. And then we've got a bunch of other stuff here. Behavior parameters, wall jump agent, ray perception sensor, ray perception sensor decision requester, model overrider. These are all the things that make this do stuff. And just to double check, let's make sure there's nothing interesting happening in the, the children of this agent. So we have, uh, this is just a mesh renderer for the cube. Uh, there's a camera, which probably isn't used at all. It looks like it's just there as an optional thing that you could turn on if you wanted to see from the agent's point of view. It's disabled by default. Then we got an eye. That's just a visible shape, mouth, and headband. So that's all just cosmetic. None of the stuff in here seems to do anything. Um, so all the magic happens right here on agent. So we'll just take a quick look at this. And the there's kind of a lot to consume here. So I probably won't be able to explain it all. But you start off with an agent. And I'm, I'm going to talk about this first, because when you add an agent script to something, it automatically adds a behavior parameter script, or at least it used to last time I checked with this. So hopefully that's still true. The agent is what makes all the decisions for the for this little cube. So it's a script and I'm going to open this up. Okay, so we have this wall jump agent script, and it's a C-sharp script that inherits from the agent class. Now, agent is part of the Unity ML agents namespace, and it does a lot of stuff. So that's like an entire video, maybe video series of its own. But essentially, you start with an agent, and then you build functionality on top of that. And so what it's doing here is, I'm gonna try and skip over some of this because it's probably gonna be a little overwhelming to explain it all. It has some functions that are called automatically by this agent class itself. It'll automatically call this initialize function. And what it's doing here is it seems to be setting up the, air, the area that it's in, 
and bear with me because I haven't actually looked at this. I'm kind of just recording this on the fly. So it looks like when it starts out, when the play button is pressed, essentially, it's going to find an object of type wall jump settings. So somewhere in the scene here, there's a wall jump settings. Let's see. Okay, so here it is. And it's going to find this, find this uh, script right here. And it looks like these are just sort of global settings, how fast the agent should run, which more like slide, I guess, the, how high it can jump, and then some materials, and then there's some overrides here I see, a gravity multiplier, and then some, uh, some physics, advanced physics stuff. So if we hop back in here, what it's doing is it's getting this and saving it to a variable. So it can check this script is going to have access to those settings. And then configuration equals random dot range between zero and five. Uh, I'm guessing that there are different configurations. You know, when we were playing this, sometimes there was no wall, sometimes there was a short wall, sometimes there was a tall wall. I think that's what those configurations are, is it randomly picks whether it's going to have like a cube or not, a uh, cube placed near the wall or not, you know, that sort of thing. So um, I guess the 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 goal there, I, I, I didn't even understand this until now. There was something where it moved the cube itself, but I don't think it was trying to move the cube to the box. I think that was just a side effect of it being in the way. So... That's what that was, the, uh, the configuration. Then it's getting the rigid body so that it can do some stuff with physics, I imagine. Uh, it has a short block, so it's trying to find that rigid body, the boundaries, ground renderer, ground material. The reason it needs access to these renderers and materials is because when it's playing, it changes the color of the area. So the agent is kind of the master of this scene here. It has complete control. It's changing the color of this boundary uh, when it gets it right to green. So that's that's why you, you see that. And then we have a uh, spawn area where we're setting this to be not active, which means it's making that spawn area, this blue thing, just invisible. So it's using that, but it's but it's not showing it anymore. And then it's getting some environment parameters. So these reset parameters, that's a, that's probably too deep to explain right now, but it's it's using some ML agents environment parameters there that you can look up in the documentation if you're curious. And then it's probably just going through, uh, let's see, this model references. I I'm not super familiar with this. This looks like something new, but I think it has something to do with using different brains. Yeah, so so you have three different brains. It's what it's clearly doing is it has a a brain that's been trained for when there's no wall and it just has to move to the spot, when there's a small wall and when there's a big wall. So it's splitting up that functionality so that it it doesn't have to remember all three, it looks like. But I'm not 100% sure of what's going on, so hopefully that's true. Then it just has some other functionality here, the jump functionality, which just tells it to jump. Um, do a ground check. That's going to probably make sure that it can't jump if it's like floating in the air, because uh, otherwise it would just kind of be a rocket ship up to the moon. Uh, let's see. What else do we have? Move towards. So that's clearly just allowing it to move in a direction. Collect observations. That one's interesting. So it's going to observe things about the environment. And this right here is observing. It's adding observations to the agent. So this is something that the agent is learning about the environment because this code right here is telling it. It's saying, add an observation of the agent position divided by 20. So the position is the position minus the ground position. So it's it's a, I'm not sure why they're dividing by 20, I guess just to keep it within a certain range. Um, it's trying, it's probably trying to keep it between zero and one. Uh, but basically it's just a, how far away this, 
this vector is it's it's a vector to the agent so it's able to observe where it is relative to the to the area that's what this is doing it threw me for a loop there by using var but it's it's a vector 3 and then it's also observing whether it's on the ground or not so that's useful now the other thing it's observing is these ray casts and this happens automatically if you have a ray perception sensor on it then it's going to use that ray perception and it's going to add it to those observations for you so you can add these to any agent that you have and you can use them for visualization purposes and you can change this so that you have more rays or less rays and you can you can change all sorts of different things there's there's sphere casting if you uh want to have it shoot kind of like a big ball out and tell it if it hits anything um Gonna undo those things so there's things you can do with that so that's that's how it's observing the world around it and that's what's being fed into the neural network that then makes a decision now we'll skip over random spawn position that's probably pretty easy swapping out the color moving the agent that's probably pretty standard all it's doing is taking in some sort of input and converting that into movement of the agent including jumping and then I wanted to get down to this one. So on action received, this is where it's telling the agent to do stuff based on what the neural network or the player controlling it, I suppose, tells it to do, it is doing some things. So it's getting instructions to move. It's getting, uh, it's doing a ray cast to, what is it doing, to determine if if it's okay so it's ray casting down and it's ray casting to see if the short block position down okay I, okay so it's this must be a ray cast to determine if it's touching the platform or if the if the block is on the platform because if either of those aren't true then um then what it needs to do is reset everything so that's clearly what's happening here is it's setting a reward it's saying uh, okay either the agents off the platform or the block is off the platform, that's bad, so we're gonna give it a negative reward, we're gonna end the episode, reset the block, and we're going to swap the material to show a failure. Heuristic, that takes in human controls, so you can control it with the W, A, S, and D key. So to show you that really quick, if I wanted to play this, I can probably set it to heuristic only here on behavior type and I can hit play I'm gonna see if I can control this with the W A S and D keys yep okay so I'm controlling it with the keyboard now and you'll see that if I push that off it detected that the block was not on the platform if I go off it determines that it wasn't on the platform and then I can and this is actually really hard <laughs> um, I can I can jump with the space bar so let's see if I can at least get over this wall. Yeah, good for me. All right, I managed to get it one out of five times. Okay, so so that you can see what's happening there is it it takes in actions from the keyboard from the player if it's set to heuristic only. I'm gonna set it back to default. I'm gonna undo. Yeah, okay, it was set to default. So that's what that does. And then looks like the rest of this probably is just basic logic on trigger stay. So here's where it says, if you're inside of the goal game object, then make sure it's on the ground and then uh, reward it, give it a positive one reward, end the episode and change the material, reset block. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. It's just placing the block back on the platform. This is when an episode begins. So it's gonna reset the block. It's going to set the local position of the agent. It's going to pick a configuration and then it's going to set the velocity of the agent to zero because if it had fallen off the platform, then it's actually going really fast and you don't want it to reset and then have the agent be going at that same speed that it was falling because it could cause problems.
it's configuring the agent here, I guess, within fixed update, uh, which seems pretty complicated, configures the agent given an integer config. The wall will have different height and a different brain will be assigned to the agent. So here's where it determines whether there is no wall, a small wall, or a big wall. And that's, so it's, it seems to be swapping out brains here based on the, based on the scene. Okay, so I know that was a lot, but that is the basics of the agent. This is kind of a lot to wrap your head around, but if you try and, you know, take it a little bit at a time and do a few examples and try to explain, or try and figure out what's happening, then it should make some sense. So hopefully this has been helpful. I know that was kind of a whirlwind tour, but I hope it explained sort of how this whole scene fits together. This is a pretty, pretty straightforward one. Uh, you know, the agent has complete control over its environment, but the way it's coded, it's not able to cheat or anything like that. It doesn't have free will. So it's very disciplined in that sense, I suppose. So that's, that's wall jump. That's ML agent setup. I will mention that if you wanted to work from this project and start developing your own ML agents, you could just copy the scene and start playing with it, change the scripts, whatever you want. You could create an entirely new scene and ML agents is already set up. I'll also mention that you don't need to set up all of this stuff. You don't need the examples to do an ML agents project. I know it was convenient to open up the project directory and have this entire thing set up, but the only things you really need to have set up are mentioned in the back in the installation documentation. I think this is where it is. It's uh, you need to add a package to the package manager, the ML agents package, and this is I think this is just showing how to do it from the folder. But let me just show you really quick. If you go to Window Package Manager, then you'll see that Unity ML Agents is in here. Once it unfreezes the UI for me, do, 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 is it under ML or Unity ML? Am I blind? Can I search ML? No? Agents? Agents? No? I'm not sure why it's not showing up here, but let's see. Maybe show preview packages turned on. That does need to be turned on usually. Unity registry in project. Okay, so here's what's in the project. So the ML agents is installed in this project already, and you can see which version is installed. And if you needed to install this manually, you can do it from disk, or you can get it from the Unity registry, which is where you would typically go. And it looks like it's just not here because it's already installed in our, in our project. So if you were creating a fresh project, you would just go to the package manager. You would, you would turn on preview packages. You would find ML agents inside of this list, and you would make sure you install the right version. And it'll look like this. It's installed. You can, of course, click to documentation and things like that. All right, this video is getting very long. So thank you for your patience with this. I really hope this was helpful. I hope I wasn't too rambly or whatever. I'm sure there are, you know, this is not completely clear if this is your first time seeing this. Don't worry. It's really... It's really a complicated project. It's a really difficult thing to work with, but it also, once you kind of wrap your head around it, once you get a project kind of up and you've, you're starting to make some progress, then iterating from there isn't too bad. I will say that in my experience, when I'm working on my own project, with the exception of like the simplest possible projects, and I mean simpler than this, it takes quite a lot of experimenting to get something like this working. So even though this seems like a very simple task, crafting the rewards, crafting the environment, making sure there's no way for it to exploit this, 
those things are difficult. So uh, give yourself some grace as you're working on this with working with ML agents. It took me a while to get it working. If you watch my first video on ML agents, the pigs, you'll see that I clearly had no idea what I was talking about. And, you know, uh, several months later, after experimenting and playing with it a lot, then I had some projects that were really pretty impressive, uh, including the airplanes, which I'm still super proud of. The airplanes flying around is really cool. And then on Unity Learn, there's a Hummingbirds project that I did that Unity partnered with me to have have me and Kayla create this course. And then they uh, they posted that on Unity Learn, which is now up for free. So. I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you thought. We'll come back with another video that has lots of uh, a bit more detail on some of the different examples that are inside of this examples directory.